Welcome, everybody. It's time once again for the next chapter with Charlie Hedges as he explores turning the page on his life and yours. Welcome to the next chapter with Charlie. Today, you've got me, Nisi Dolan, interviewing Charlie as he's invited me to participate as a guest host on a subject near and dear to his heart, the value of brokenness. You know, this year has taught so many of us the power in being flexible, mending what's broken or requires improvement, and building something beautiful and better than what we once knew. Today in this podcast episode, I'm eager to talk closely with Charlie as a guest host for the next chapter. Hi, Charlie. Hey, Nisi. I'm, I'm so looking <laughs> forward to our time together. You, you know, you are, you are a broadcast person just beginning your, your new route to success, and I'm 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 in eager, aw- eagerly awaiting, uh, with anticipation, and 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 I must say that oh a, a month or two ago you interviewed me about about the charity that we're involved with, and you had questions for me, and at that time you were so young, you're in you're in law school, and you do so many incredible things. And your questions, Nisi, I have to tell you, your questions were as best as any that have ever asked of me. And and if you recall, I said, I think you ought to be a podcast host. I think you can do this. <laughs> well, thank you, Charlie. And, and thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of your show today. It's an honor, and I'm really excited to exchange some thoughts with you. Um, you know, it's great working uh, at Wells of Life with you, uh, an organization that drills and restores wells in, in Uganda. And, um, you know bringing that into us talking about brokenness, uh, you know, at Wells of Life, we restore broken wells, and I want to kind of get your take or your perspective on on mending broken things. Well, it is so essential in, in the wells that we mend in Uganda. You, ha- you have to understand, you know, it, it's a little, little bit of history. There are people mm-hmm. that have waited, you, you know, decades for a clean water well, and they've been drinking contaminated resources. It gives them diarrhea, cholera, all sorts of diseases. And right. and now imagine that you've waited for decades. You get a well, and then the driller does what we call hit and run. They don't they don't stay to to see the the end result of that well. And it's it's a machine. A well is a machine, and machines break down. And after a couple of years, they break down. And these people who once had something now have nothing and have to go back to the contaminated water source. And that is so horrible for them. And and you you know. You never know how much you miss something until you lose it, and right. you know that means you had to have it to begin with. And that is the story of, of the people that we go and we restore wells for, and there is a sense in in fixing the brokenness that gives a whole view of life, and that is it is through brokenness. You know, through brokenness and through not having what we want, that we understand the privilege of having what we want. And brokenness, as we will discuss later in our top as we get in topic as we get into some Japanese thought, that brokenness is actually a place of honor, not a place of failure and dishonor. Yes, yeah, so that's very interesting. Thank you. Uh, thank you for adding that. I. I heard you mention something about uh, you know Japanese concepts. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that and how it relates to brokenness? A, a little bit. <laughs> or a lot. Or a lot. <laughs> Let's dive in. You know, we, we we talked about a couple of concepts. I, I I think I think they're both essential and and there's a there's a Japanese lifestyle concept that uh, I I can't pronounce the Japanese word, but it is. I, I understand it is difficult in translation, but it's it's the term is 
wabasabi, not to be confused with Japanese horseradish wasabi. This is <laughs> wabi, W-I-B-I, and then a separate word, sabi. And it has to do with the beauty of things past and still existing today. And, and there are three tenets in wabasabi, and that is all that is valuable is imperfect, impermanent, and incomplete. And every one of those are diametrically opposed to everything we believe in. We believe in things must be completed. Things are built to last and, and that they will be permanent. And when we finish them, although there's always an incompleteness, a sense of where we can, we can uh, restore, modify, make improvements, but that it is of itself complete. And this Japanese, now I, I wish I could say I'm deep into Japanese cultural and religious thought, and I'm not. Uh, I, I honor it. I, I've, I've read books on, on wabasabi and am so moved by the plainness and simpleness. It doesn't have to be brand new. I was explaining to somebody today that wabasabi tea houses Mm -hmm. uh, are very difficult to find in, in Southern California, and that is genuine wabasabi tea houses because they are not ornate. They are not like okay. the tea house where you go to British tea, you know, and you have all of your little sandwiches and everything is on the finest of China. Instead, there's small, broken down buildings. Many times the doorway is not tall enough for. A person to get through, you have to get on your knees and go under. And they serve with old teacups, old with stewing pots or or seeping pots. And oh. and they are actually, strangely enough, they're quite expensive because they're so difficult to find. But it is the original tea ceremony of Japan. That is what they, it is not based on what is modern and what is popular, but it's what is original and there is this there is this beauty of antiquity there is this beauty of maybe not even necessarily antiquity but just even a few hundred years ago that things are built well and and that's sort of the idea of wabasabi is that we accept this incomplete this imperfect and this impermanent and as long as i look at myself Nisi, when I look at myself through those windows, mm -hmm. I see a whole different me. Wow. How about you? Do, how does that how does that impact you? Um, I mean, it definitely resonates, you know, when you take a look at yourself and, and you know, the, the as you said, imperfections, the impermanence um, and what may feel incomplete. Um, just being able to have that sort of a self-assessment, I feel, is very important just for growth in general. Um, and, and learning how to, as, as we spoke about before, bend a little bit and, and have some flexibility to grow. Um, so that's, that's where it resonates with me. I'm, I'm actually really fascinated to know how you learned more about these concepts. You know, where does your, your knowledge of this, this tradition come in for you? You know, I, I, I will have to look it up. And since you're quicker than me, you can look up, um, uh, look up wabasabi, and there's a book. Okay. The artist, the has to do with the artist view of wabasabi. That was I read in an evening, and I've read it a couple of times. It mm -hmm. is it is so powerful. Do you see that that book of an artist, some sort of artist perception mm -hmm. of wabasabi? That was a book that I read that that led me into this this beauty of antiquity. And I think since then I've discovered another Japanese discipline works so well with wabasabi, and that is called kintsugi. It's K-I-N-T-S-U-G-I. And this is, <laughs> for those of you who have noticed Japanese, Japanese art and sculpture, things Japanese that people put in their house that really are that are Japanese, Japanese um, followers of, of Japanese thought. And this kintsugi is, they take a broken cup 
And rather than throw a broken cup or a broken pot or a, a broken bowl or plate, they repair it and they repair it with an epoxy that is laden with gold, silver, or platinum. And the brokenness of the cup stands out in this gold, silver, or platinum. It, it, is, it is obvious. It's not like putting super glow glue where we're trying to hide the imperfection. Mm -hmm. This is not hiding the imperfection. This is highlighting the imperfection. And we are, at my place in life, I have come to honor the imperfection and to know it only gives me windows and ideas into my personal growth, into what I can do better. I, I, I like the word, wow. I like the word evolution, that I am, that I am personally evolved in, in an evolutionary process of becoming who one day I hope to be. Powerful. Very yeah. powerful. Um, it's as if that you're illuminating, you know, the, the challenges that you face, the obstacles that you face and had to overcome. And not only that, but mend them um, and, and turn them into something better. Um, let me ask you this then what is one piece of advice that you would give to someone who's navigating through their own personal or uh, professional bends? Uh, how, how can they best grow? Uh, can you describe to me the professional bends? What, what, what you, you, you think about that? Sure. Um, well, I mean, it could be with anything, a new job, perhaps, um, you know, learning how to grow within within that new position or maybe trying to surpass uh, a certain level at work, um, you know, and trying to embark on something new or, you know, do something better than, than one has done in the past. Um, how, how would we, or how would you advise someone to do better and, and to grow professionally? Hmm. That's a wonderful question. Um, and there is no, there is no predetermined path that that mm -hmm. path that path is reminiscent of J.R. Tolkien and uh, Frodo when Frodo mm -hmm. was was given the challenge by Gandalf to go on this journey Frodo had no idea where to go to engage himself in the journey and so Frodo mm -hmm walked out of his house, took a look around his house, and pointed east, and it said, I think we'll go east. And that was, that was his direction, is that he, he, had, he had learnings in mind, and he knew he had adventures in mind, but he didn't know where, when, how, or what. And that reminds me of a story that, that I have told frequently on the show, and that is riding from New York to California. Um, and I was upgraded in those days, so I was flying first class with, a, uh, mm -hmm. with an EVP from Schwab. And it was in the days before, before trading companies became public, you know, and you could go online and do your trading. You had to call your trader and do all the trading. Well, they wanted to... They wanted to start an online version of it, which is now the way to go, but it had never been done before. And, and I asked very curiously, so, so how did that turn out? And he said, you know, Charlie, one thing we decided is that instead of Frodo like going east, they were in New York, and they said, we're headed west. All we know is that we are headed west. We don't know if our destination is St. Louis or Seattle but we do know that we're headed west. And I think that has largely to do, a large amount to do with people in a new business, a mm -hmm. new career, a new venture, is that figure out what west is in the big picture. That, mm -hmm. and, and many times you do that by, by identifying what it's not. This is, this is not going to be a part of my life. I don't want this to be a part of my life. And after you did identify what's not, what, what, what is um, your goal does emerge. And so I have, um, 
I have a, I have a couple of suggestions that um, okay. that I think are really helpful. One I learned in Alcoholics Anonymous, and that is brutal honesty. You must be brutally honest with yourself and in self-reflection. Who are you? We are, we are the the Christian mystics. Speak of the false ego, or the no. small ego, and that ego that is so determined to for what I call the three Ps for power, prestige, and possessions, and yet none of them ever satisfy. They mm. they are you know they have their brief. I got my moment. I have bought this wasn't that fun for a couple of weeks or a couple of months, but now I need something else. And they talk about, um, I use the word detachment, but, but they are, they like the word of unattached. I like you unattached to these things that you have been so attached to, a- mm-hmm. attached to your toys, attached to your, attached to your status in your career, not into the results or the positive aspects of your career, but uh, attached to what it says about you. And so I think we need a brutally honest self-reflection of who am I? What what am I all about? And what are the false images that are derailing me and making me this life all about me rather than about, in my language, rather than about service? I think I think influence and service we can you know I know personally that's mine I can't I can't speak for anybody else but that's personally my two drivers is that to influence others to good things in their life and to serve others to help them to attain those good things in their life um, that 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 sort of takes up who I am so there's a brutally honest self-reflection and then there mm-hmm. is in this, in this core of you, and I sense it's with you, Nisi, in, in everything you do, because everything you do is done with excellence. And oh, that you. <laughs> what well, you do, and that you have a desire, there's a desire for something better. It's not as if there's anything wrong with what you're doing or you're incomplete with what you're doing. You were just in a stage, and especially as a young woman, but mm-hmm. believe me, it doesn't dissipate with old age, you know, um, mm-hmm. is that there's always the desire for something more. I want to experience something different, something better. I want to change. I, 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 I want to improve. And so I think, oh, it's, I think it's about brutal, honest reflection. It's about a desire for something better. And then the next word is the ugly word, and that's commitment. Um, <laughs> would love to hear it <laughs> well you know but you, you know Nisi if you don't have discipline you're not going to get what you want exactly right I agree <laughs> you, you, and, and, and you have to define that discipline and even that discipline is open ended and it can be modified and, and it can be reconstructed into a more complete discipline of where you're going but once you get the habit of discipline you can um, you really can make major strides in your life. So those would be three things. Are those helpful to you at all? Absolutely. I mean, very, very deep and, and meaningful. So I, I appreciate you sharing that. I think that um, for anyone, including myself or, or listeners, that, that would be really helpful in trying to navigate not only professional growth, but uh, personal growth as well, you know having the discipline and being committed to, to mend the things um, that we'd like to fix or, or see better. Um, I, I think that's beyond helpful. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you know, of course. You know something I wanted to, can I, can I interject something that I, that I failed to interject in the past and I think it was really, absolutely. it's very important and that we were talking about honoring our brokennesses and, mm-hmm. and, and, and that is, you know, that's a neglected. We don't want to honor our brokennesses. We want to ignore them, move past them, and run on to something better. But I think of my times, and, you know, I had I had trials in early childhood and, and trials in college, and then I became, in college, I became a full-time hippie. I went from a 
full scholarship athlete to um, motorcycle owning, long bearded, long haired. <laughs> you know, this was in the late sixties and early seventies. <laughs> and I looked, you, you know, Nisi, I used to look at the decade of the seventies, so that would have been in my twenties, as a dark decade because those were the days for me and. You know, I'm ashamed to say, but they were they were the truth. That those were the days where sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I mean, and that's right. that's what you did in those days. You know, you 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 took substances, you drank, you partied, and and so I looked at that as is you know for for so long, Nisi, I looked at that as a negative experience in my life that I was somewhat ashamed of, and then it's really been with only the la- only the last six months that I looked at those days through different eyes, and it helped me to look through them, not through the eyes of the young adult that was experiencing them, but the mm-hmm. eyes, look at through them the, through the eyes of the mature, mature adult who is analyzing them. You come up mm-hmm. with very, very different conclusions. If you look through Charlie the child or Charlie the adolescent eyes, I see only the negative. I see only the bullshit. I see only the stuff that I shouldn't have done. But if mm-hmm. I looked at them through the eyes of an older, more experienced, much more on the on uh, having experienced failure, and I look back, and you know what, Nisi, I thought I see in those days, I see the relationships mm-hmm. that I built. You know, people people say, you know, oh, people who drink and and do substances don't really have friends. Well, that's you know, that's a lie. That's just a flat lie. I mm-hmm. I was talking to another friend who, who, you know, is fond of pubs. He's not an alcoholic by any, by any means, but he's fond of pubs. And we talked about, you know, many times your very best friends are the guy you're sitting next to having a pint with. And, right. and, and you, you know, especially if they're a bit stranger oriented, you know, they're not a close friend. You, you tend to get open. You talk about things that you wouldn't ordinarily talk about, and and I I look back at those times and I think my friendships were rich. I I had growth in my career, which was amazing. I don't know how I did it, but I but I went to a to a a, a corporate a corporate division manager from mm-hmm. janitor, and that happened during those years. And oh, wow. and you know also during those years early in those years, Nisi I hitchhiked around the country. I hitchhiked. Wow, I spent incredible. I spent three months, two hundred dollars in three months going from Malibu, California to Toronto, Canada, New York, uh, in the states, and then I stayed north because I was. We were warned. We all had long hair and said. With your long hair, I wouldn't advise going in the South in the early 70s. That's probably, mm. you may not walk out alive. <laughs> but, but you know, it, it's a perspective, isn't it? You know, about, and, and I look at those times, and I'm happy to weld those times with epoxy and gold and silver and platinum in that. What I, I learned from those times, Nisi, I would not be the man I am today without those very difficult and trying experiences. Yeah, I mean, experience shapes us, right? And and instead of it being a dark decade, you've turned it into something that is golden. I mean, there's so much power and value in that. Absolutely. So tell me, what's on your agenda now, Nisi? Oh, for me? <laughs> yeah. You know, um, and, and hearing you share your story, it, it really does resonate with me, um, I've only been a resident of, of California for about a year now and um, navigating, you know, grad school um, and, and you know, working with a wonderful organization. It just reminds me of how far um, we can all come as, as individuals. So for me, it, it really is maybe not so much about um, about the brokenness itself, um, but just about about the growth and, and learning from those those dark times. Um, figuring out how to mend and how to, you know, consistently, as you so eloquently put it, make things better, just consistently make things better. Um, 
that's something I would like to, to carry on with me uh, into my late 20s <laughs> and, and so forth, right? Um, well, it just it doesn't stop. Do. It, it doesn't stop in your late twenties, my friend. <laughs> is I'm about, I think, fourteen days till seventy-two, and I'm already wow. thinking a new career. I love that. That's crazy. You know, I'm thinking. I'm, I'm talking to my coach. I have it. I, you know, I, I always have a personal coach of some kind, and I'm talking to my coach mm-hmm. and say, "Am I nuts?" And she says, "Absolutely not." You know, this is. You have experience with this. You're not going into a brand new sort of set of circumstances. You've got, you know, I'm I'm talking about perhaps doing lightweight coaching and, um, Mm -hmm. well, it would actually be heavyweight coaching with a very lightweight clientele. Not a, I keep saying that wrong, with a very minimal clientele. Mm -hmm. Um, But but I'm looking for, for, experienced people who have um, who've already made a change in the world and they want to and they want to sort of redirect and get new ideas but but she reminded me of you know of the thousands of hours of coaching that I've had and that 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 I that I've conducted and mm-hmm. and I, I I'm, I'm excited about that and that and that is that's growth you know that's just right you know I'm 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 reading and learning I just just had it and I'd never do this was given a 300 page book on this and read it in two sittings and I don't read that fast so for me That's to amazing. read in two sittings well fortunately it wasn't small print <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness but that's still that's still amazing that you're able to absorb that information and it I mean that looks like you know your next chapter right it is my next chapter they never seem to stop yeah, well, congratulations on that. I mean, that is truly something to celebrate. Thank you. So let me let me let me just take just a slight little detour, and then we can and then we can kind of wrap up. But I want to okay. know what are you? You are so talented, and you you know your your reputation. You haven't been with the organization. You, we are both with Wells of Life. Um, mm-hmm. That that drills water wells in Uganda for, gee, this year, at the end of this year, we should hit close to 800,000, I think. I, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just it's just ridiculous number of people. And we're so blessed. It's magnificent, yeah. It, oh, <laughs> yes. And, and so you, you have that, but you're, but you're in grad school for, for law. Now, do you attend, do you intend to go into law, or is that supporting you in another discipline? Um, it, it, it's a supportive, it's a supportive um, additive, uh, for sure. You know, with Wells of Life, I'm, I'm so fortunate to be able to work with, with you and our lovely uh, team, uh, particularly with our communications team, and, uh, and studying in grad school and studying business law. My concentration is just really to, to really have that, that extra added support, you know, to understand our organizational structure so that we can grow and, um, impact more people positively. You know, wells of life right now, we're, we're drilling and restoring wells in Uganda, but at the end of the day, there's still 785 million people around the globe who don't have access to clean water. And so for me, and I think for, you know, if I may speak for you and for our, uh, our founders, at Wells of Life, I'd, I'd love to see the global water crisis end. Um, yeah. So whatever it is I can do to support the organization um, to provide clean water, that, that's what I would like to do. <laughs> that's Big ter- picture, right? <laughs> that's terrific. Now, you know, I, I just received a report from another large water charity, uh, mm-hmm. Water Mission, and they're very, very large. And they were asking a number of people without water, and she just, you know, the, and the and the person that we were spoke, speaking with said, you know, it just depends. There's so much data. There's so many data points, and it depends on how you look at the data points. But you know, okay. you mentioned like 780 million or something like that people without water. Mm-hmm. She says the real, the truer number mm-hmm. is nearly a third of the world's population is 2.1 billion. Two point one billion, it's and it's and it's so the, disheartening. Well, yeah, and it is it is the the number one cause of poverty in the world. 
is mm -hmm. lack of clean water because you can't have you have um, 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 what kind of growth you have stunted growth you have diseases you have children not right. going to school you have parents with no education and parents with no mm -hmm. hope of what are they going to do next and it's just it's just is this this terrible cycle which we are in the process we have been a giving organization we want to continue to be a giving organization but we want to transition into an empowering organization where exactly. we are in com empowering communities to take take charge of their own life rather than waiting for the imperialistic white man to come and save our day right yeah, I mean, I, I I couldn't agree more. I mean, look at me. I'm I'm not the imperialistic white man, so I no, <laughs> I you're understand. you're not. Yeah, yeah, you'd have a hard time fitting that. <laughs> right. So you know, I I I'm excited for us to see kind of what what comes comes about of this, what comes about this movement movement, and how we can help you know economically um, and education wise to to kind of to solve this, right? To to mend it. Um, so. Yeah, I'm I'm more than thrilled that I get to do that with you. Um, it is it is quite the honor, um, and it's been it's been really great. I think it's one of those kind of what we talked about, one of those challenges um, for growth, uh, not only for ourselves as we look at you know the impermanence, the imperfections, and, and the incompleteness, but how we can help each other um, do that as well. That togetherness. Uh, it's just a community. So, so thank you for, for talking with me about that today. I feel, um, empowered and excited to, to continue that on. Was there anything or any one question that you wish I'd ask, uh, as we, as we spoke today that you'd like to answer? I think, you know, as I anticipated, you've done an excellent job. You, uh, you have a, you have a career as a host of a podcast. Hi. I say a career. You have, you have, you have a, non-renumerated career you don't very few of us make any money on this but, it, but it's still a fun career it is fun yes thank you so much for for involving me uh, i love the next chapter and I, I can't wait to see what else you guys do well thank you nisi i am i am it is just such an honor to have you on the show um and and to give you an opportunity to display your talent and and I want listeners to know that she had one hour to prepare for this podcast. And, <laughs> and, and it's just, it's so prepared. I'm, I'm scared to do work with her because she's so competent. That makes me look incompetent. Oh, um, no, we work great <laughs> together. Look, we think on our feet and we have a good time doing it. <laughs> I agree. I agree. So thank you. And we'll look forward to, to publishing this in a couple of weeks. And uh, is there any way that you want people to get in touch with you? I mean, do you have any, or, or do you want to just kind of hold off on that? Um, sure. I mean, for anyone who wants to get in touch with me, um, they can contact me at Wealth of Life at my email, Nisi, N-E-S-E, -E, at wealthoflife.org. Um, yeah, if, if anyone wants to reach out, I am readily available. And thank you again, Charlie. Thank you to your team. Um, I look forward to working with you in the future. Thanks. Likewise, Nisi. I want to thank all our listeners as well to tuning in to the next chapter with Charlie and, you know, our website, uh, thenextchapter.life. And as usual, until next, this is Charlie Hedges signing off. Bye for now.